So I'm Treeti here. I'll be the instructor for the complete course. I have almost 15 years of experience into IT, played different roles and currently working as a DevOps manager. And uh, I have also experience uh, in uh, training people in DevOps for more than six years or almost seven years. I was uh, training people. I have experience in corporate trainings as well on various uh, tools and strategies on DevOps. So that's a brief about myself. So uh, I would like to uh, begin the content, go through the content here. Today we'll be uh, going through the overview of DevOps, like what is DevOps, why DevOps came into picture. So we'll get started with this. Before that, I would also like to give a gist about the course. So let me uh, share the presentation. Whoever having any audio issues, please try to rejoin. There are issues from your end. Everyone can hear me. Please try to rejoin and recheck from your end. Right. So uh, today's topic will be overview of DevOps. Like I said, it would be a kind of intro. Right today, it would be almost theoretical part, and uh, when you come to the course every day, it will be hands on, complete practical sessions will be there. And any topic, if you are dealing with, uh, you might be already aware of this topic or you might be new to this topic. So, assuming like we have a uh, uh, people from different expertise and different experience levels, we'll be taking up any topic from the basics till advanced. Uh, topic so that it can be helpful for you in the projects. That would be the main agenda. The main agenda of this course is after this course, you can work on your projects independently and with more confidence. You will add value to your project, right? Also, this will, be, this will help you clear your interviews, right? So uh, it would be interview oriented. Uh, whenever we were dealing with any topic, we'll be also discussing the interview questions the, from the perspective of interview so that it will help you clear your interviews, work in the projects more confidently. That's the agenda. So how is this possible? This is possible with a well-designed course content with all the uh, 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 with all the programs or with all the co uh, content we were going through. You will be having the quiz. Every day you'll be having a quiz, you'll be having interview questions, we'll be supporting with a resume preparation. You'll be provided with the class recordings every day so that after the class you have to go through and do the hands-on. Hands-on is a mandatory, okay? For DevOps, you should definitely do the hands-on. Just listening will not work. As it is a day one, like I said, it would be a kind of intro and with the high-level overview. But this will give you, today's session will give you the overall agenda of the course. Yes, this will be helpful for anyone who are looking to switch your careers. Like, let's say you might be a tester, you might be a developer for 10 years or 15 years. If you want to make a move, if you want to switch your career, yes, this is the course for you. I I definitely know that like you, you might be having a lot of questions, like you might be coming from different backgrounds, like development background or else... A uh, non-development, like you might not, not be from coding background, whether you will be fit into it. All these questions will be answered today. By the end of this uh, session, all those questions will be answered, right? So let's begin uh, with the course content. Like I said, any topic we will we are dealing with will be going from the basics, assuming that we are all new. So if you already know this, kindly be patient. This is for your uh, revision or recap. Right, consider it as like your revision if you already know something. So let's begin. Uh, can we proceed? Are you all with me? Able to hear me and see the screen? Good to go. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, are good to go. Right, right. Thank you all. Thanks for your confirmation. So now let's begin with the DevOps. Like, what is DevOps first? Why should we learn DevOps? Isn't it? What, what is the need? Why do we need to learn this? So whenever you are learning any topic or anything. Particularly, you should know why you should learn it, right? Where is it used? What is it? These questions should be answered. Like, what is DevOps? Why do you need it? Right? How to implement it? And where do you use it? So, these questions should be answered first. So, let us try to understand, like, why DevOps came. To understand why DevOps came in, let's talk about the uh, traditional approach. We are using so many applications in our real world, right? You are using some application means... It has gone through a lot of process. 
and so many teams are involved. You are seeing some application, you are using as an end user means it has gone through a lot of process and you have, and there were so many teams involved. I'm talking about the major teams, which we all, all know, like development team, right? QA team, we know that QAs are testers who test the application and ops teams. Let's talk about these teams. Okay, these are the main teams involved. Of course, there were so many other teams involved in, but I'm talking about these three teams. When you talk about development, yes, there are developers who write the code, who develop the application, who design the application, right? So developers write the code, QA people test the application. Again, there are multiple ways of testing, like manual testing, automation testing, and so on. And then ops teams are the people who work for deploying the application who work for, let's say in short, let's say they work, to, they are people who work for like administrative tasks or else networking or else uh, database thing. I'm including all of them under ops. Like if development team need any uh, operating system or any new service. Similarly, testers may need some new changes in the OS or else new services, whatever. They would request the ops teams. Means ops teams would be taking care of infrastructure. Any requirement dev team have, they will raise a request to ops team. Ops team should serve their request, right? So let's suppose, okay, developers and testers, uh, let's say they need some new service. Okay, they cannot do on their own or else they are not supposed to do. They will request the ops teams. Ops teams should serve this request. Before ops team serves the request, they would do a lot of checks. Like if this new service or new change is done, is the infra going to be stable or any servers going to be uh, down or else any services going to be uh, stopped or else any network going to be disconnected, any access going to be affected. So they would do a lot of checks before they serve this request, correct? And yeah, you can consider admins, network technicians, DBA under ops. So they would do all these checks before they serve the request of any dev team or QA team. And all of this definitely takes some time. And developers doesn't know why ops team is taking a lot of time. Similarly, ops team doesn't have clarity on why developers are requesting this change, right? So developers and QA team always need agility in the infra to perform data. Some changes they need always. Ops teams always look for stability in the infra. What may happen, infrastructure should be stable. Application should be up and running and always available. That's their main agenda. So each of the team work with a different skill set. See, if you take developers, they know programming, right? They may have database knowledge. They may have build tools, knowledge on build tools, building the application. So their skill set is different from QA. QA, they'll be working on uh, developing test cases, either manual or automation. So, and ops teams has got a different skill set. So these three teams are working for the same application, but their skill set is different. Their core competences are different, right? So because of this difference, they don't have proper understanding on what other teams are requesting. Means uh, dev team doesn't have clarity on why ops team is taking a lot of time to serve their request. Similarly, ops teams doesn't understand why developers should request this change at this point of time. So there is some gap between these teams. And yeah, whenever developers write the code, that would be tested by QA and QA will send the feedback to developers. They'll fix it and they work together. So I'm including this uh, two teams together for now and calling them as dev. Whenever I say dev, yes, I'm including QA also here. So dev team doesn't understand challenges of ops and ops team doesn't understand the challenges of dev. Hence, there arises the gap between the teams. How to overcome this gap? Any solution? Any way to overcome this gap? Anyone? Any solution? Any ideas from your end? Firstly, why there is a gap? Because of their skill sets are different. Their core competencies are different, right? So there is no proper understanding between them, proper collaboration, proper communication is not there. So there is a gap between them. How to overcome this gap? That's where actually DevOps came in. Why DevOps came in? DevOps came in to eliminate the gap between the teams. 
So why it came? One of the reasons is to eliminate the gap between the teams. It's not the only reason. There are many other reasons, right? So let's talk about the second reason why DevOps. One is to overcome the gap. And what is the second one? Second one is like, okay, developers are ready with the code. Okay, that's been tested by QA team. QA team has identified some bugs. Let's say, okay, they identified some bugs. They sent to developers. Okay, they fixed it. And this process keep on continuing till the application is defect-free, bug-free. Agree with this part, everyone? Right? So the application is defect-free. Once the application is defect-free, it should reach the end users. Means it should go through the process called release. Release means it would be deployed so that end users can access it. Correct? I'm explaining this for the benefit of uh, any beginners or any people who are coming into this area. So I'm even mentioning and explaining the uh, smallest things here. If you have any questions, you can feel free to respond back. So this is going for end users, means it will go through a process called release, means there comes ops teams who should deploy this application on the servers so that end users can use it. So QA team and dev team will hand over this application to the ops teams. Along with this application, they will also hand over some instruction document, right? Meaning, let's suppose, let's say, for example, this is some Java application. So ops teams have to configure the servers with the right version of Java, correct? Which version of Java should they use? That should be given by developers because it is their application. They should know which version is compatible. Let's say this Java is running on some Tomcat. Which version of Tomcat? And what are all the dependencies that should be there on the server, particularly which version of the dependencies, ops teams should figure out all of these things. That's why they'll also provide the instruction document with those details. So now dev team and QA team are handing over the application to ops team along with the instruction document. Ops teams are supposed to follow this instruction document and deploy them on the servers. But when they were going through the instruction document, some of the instructions may not be clear, right? Some of the instructions may not be understandable by ops teams because, like I said, their perspective, they, these are two teams who have different perspectives. So whatever they have mentioned may not be understandable. Sometimes they may not be working. And sometimes they might be working on few servers. Let's say they might be working on Linux servers, might not be working on other servers, right? That might be the case. Also, the instruction document they provided might be a couple of months back, but it might be not be working after a few months. So they have a lot of challenges. Ops teams have to figure out all of these things and see the application is deployed. Let's say application is handed over on March. It might go to end users in June. It may take a couple of months because they need to sort out all of these things. Not only these things, once application is deployed, they should check for high availability. They should check nothing is going wrong or something is not broken so that end users will have the, always the application available for them, right? So if something is broken, ops teams should be able to fix them and see the application is reachable for all, always. Right. All of these things takes a lot of time and deployment becomes very slow. How to increase the velocity? How to increase the velocity of these deployments? Right. That's where again DevOps comes in. In DevOps, there is automated way of deployments where automation 24-7 automation is possible. Means whenever the application is ready, it could hit the production servers or it could hit the uh, end users. Um, environments automatically without any manual intervention. That is possible. Means deployments wouldn't take longer like months like it is happening in the traditional approach now. It can be automated. How we will learn? I'm talking about why. Why one is to overcome the gap. Second one is to speed up, to increase the velocity of deployments. And is it possible? Obviously through automation, 24-7 automation is needed, which is possible through DevOps. Am I clear with the two reasons? The first two reasons, are we clear? Yes, very Good. Yes. So you can unmute and mute. give me a confirmation or else any questions, you can feel free to put your queries. Yes, pretty. Yeah. Thank you all for confirming. So that's the second reason. Any other reasons? Of course, yes. The third one is to overcome the challenges posed by the traditional methodologies. 
by now you might have understood devops is a methodology it's a process okay devops means it's not a tool it's not about automation it's a methodology it's a strategy it's a process it's a cultural change this will overcome the challenges posed by the traditional methodologies what are those traditional methodologies i'll come to that part just a few minutes So to overcome the challenges posed by the traditional methodologies. What is a traditional methodology? Like, let's talk about SDLC. Yes, uh, Venkatesh, I'm going to quote those examples. SDLC means Software Development Lifecycle. If anyone knew here, this is for them. Software Development Lifecycle. Software Development Lifecycle means it's nothing but sequence of activities involved in developing an application. Here, the idea is not that to teach you SDLC, but just an overview. Like we all know, there will be sequence of activities like requirement gathering, requirement analysis, design, coding, then comes coding after coding testing, then comes delivery and maintenance. So these are the phases involved in developing an application. Okay, like it goes each phase, like one phase after the other. By now, you might have understood the name. Yes, we were talking about waterfall methodology. There were so many methodologies. Waterfall methodology is one such methodology, which is very famous and which served the industry for decades, more than uh, two decades. It served the industry more than two decades. But it has got lot many challenges. Both the dev team, ops teams face a lot of challenges because of this methodology. The first methodology is uh, like developers, let's say they write the code, right? Then testing begins. You can see it just goes only one after the other, right? And like, like let's say developers are uh, done with the coding, then begins testing. Meanwhile, developers might be working on new piece of code. Then testers comes with the bugs in the old code. There'll be a lot of pressure to developers to work on the new code and fix the bugs in the old code. So definitely this is going to be also this takes time because bug fixing, if it is not happening immediately and if it is happening after some six months, obviously it's a time taking process, right? Lot of effort, lot of pressure on developers and it's not flexible enough. Let's say you are in design phase. Client may come up with new requirements. Gathering those requirements or accepting them is not possible, not flexible enough. Nowadays, almost all the clients comes with a new requirements, right? So if you are not able to handle new requirements, it doesn't work. Means, let me give a detail here. Let's say you got requirements on 2024, right? Let's say 2024, January, you got the requirements. In February, March and so on, you know new requirements will be accepted. Complete product will be all delivered at once. That's a third challenge, right? Uh, maybe in 2026. If you don't accept any changes and delivering whatever requirements you have in January 2024, client doesn't need it anymore because it's a customer facing world. Business changes very rapidly. The methodology should be available, should be able to handle any new requirements modifications. If that is not the case, it doesn't work. Right? So these are all the challenges dev team has got with the waterfall methodology. Similarly, ops teams also also face certain challenges. Like ops teams challenges are like because it's a slow process, they need to maintain the servers up and running for longer duration, right? Which is again a challenge. Here I'm talking about everything manual, right? Everything manual, no uh, tools. So maintaining the uptime of the servers for longer duration is a challenge. Poor configuration management. Configuration management is totally a different topic. We are having separate sessions dedicated for it. We have configuration management tools Ansible cover. We have a dedicated uh, sessions for them. But here at this point, let me tell you, configuration management means having a control on the infra. Like what is happening on what server at what time, how to overcome the issues. All of that can be handled here. Poor configuration management, no proper configuration management because no tools are used here and no proper monitoring. We need a monitoring the servers continuous, but that's not possible here. Like everything is manual in this waterfall methodology and which led to a lot of challenges. 
So to overcome this, again, how to overcome this? That's where another methodology called exile came in actually. Exile methodology came in to overcome these challenges. But exile was successful only to a certain extent. Like it can overcome the challenges of developers. But challenges of upstream are still there. Means we need another methodology which can overcome challenges of both the teams. Correct? That's where DevOps came in. DevOps could successfully overcome challenges of both the teams. So, what, what is the other reason? It can overcome challenges posed by traditional methodologies like Agile, Waterfall and so on. Are we clear? Yeah. Yes, it, so, is it the uh, DevOps is the methodology like Ops team is using to overcome these challenges? DevOps is a methodology which everyone will use. See, when you say waterfall methodology, both dev team and ops team are using the methodology, right? It's a methodology, it's a process. Similarly, mm -hmm. as a, uh, DevOps is a methodology which everyone will follow. Like your application is going through this methodology for deployments and all. So everyone will follow this methodology. Let me tell you another interesting point here. Uh, I'll come to your question, Sarita. I'll elaborate it in a few minutes. Before that, let me just give you a gist of Agile. Here again, I'm telling you, intention is not to teach you Agile, but just let me give you a small bit of it. Okay, we'll be learning it. Like we, we will talk about these terms later. So let me talk about Agile. Agile is successful to overcome those methodol, I mean, those drawbacks. But how? How is it possible? Right? Let, let's uh, try to understand this. Exile is able to overcome those things because Exile follows something called continuous integration, continuous testing. Means what is what is that? Just let's have a walk through that. When you talk about Exile, yes, Exile is Exile follows like every week or every alternative week there will be a release. Code is not delivered all at once after two years. Okay, every week, every alternative week there will be a release. And also bug fixing is faster because see code is developed today. It will be immediately going for testing next day or same day. So <coughs> if testing is done immediately, it would be faster. Also code is always stable and ready for release. It's not that after two weeks, you sorry, after two years, you deliver it. Right. These are all the things implemented in Azile. Also, if you look into, let's say week one, a chunk of code A will be developed. Okay, immediately on the next week, this particular chunk of code A will be going for testing. Meanwhile, developers are not sitting idle. They will develop another chunk, parts, okay, another part of code B. Again on week three, okay, this A and B will be combined and tested. Then only it makes a complete product, right? So if you see here, testing and development is happening every week parallelly, right? Because of this, developers are testers are working hand in hand, understanding challenges of others, right? This concept is called continuous development, means every week development testing is happening. Continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, means every change will be merged into the system and tested. That's called continuous integration. Because Azal is implementing it, it can overcome certain challenges. What is continuous development? What is continuous testing? What is continuous integration? We are going to learn in depth in this course with practicals. Means it doesn't mean that you write the code, but you will see how this is happening parallelly. Right? So because of this, it can overcome the challenges. Now, till now what we are talking about, developers will hand, developers and QA team will hand over this application to ops teams. This is the traditional approach, right? They'll hand over this application along with the instruction document. So ops team struggle to develop. This is the traditional approach. Sorry, uh, ops team struggle to deploy by checking the versions, dependencies and so on, which is taking a lot of time. Now with the DevOps, like I said, it is going to be automated. How it is going to be automated? A dev team, when they are done with the code and testers are done with their testing, they will again hand over the application to DevOps teams. What is the difference? Here, earlier, let's say, let's talk about Java application. Like we take an example. They used to share that var file 
or a jar file whatever you call it see this is nothing but deployable file if you don't know where jar don't worry you don't need to learn java for it it's just a file which is a deployable that they, they'll share it to ops teams so they may share in any format they'll uh, deploy it er file whatever right but now the way they were sharing the application totally changed. They will containerize this application and share it in the form of Docker image. Means dev team, QA team, they were not sharing the application as it is with instructions. They will share it in the form of Docker image. What is Docker image? We are going to have separate, like you see the course content, we have all these topics covered. Means here the point to note at this level is the way they were sharing the application completely changed. Right, if they share it this way, DevOps team no need to work on the underlying dependencies like which version of Java and all. They'll take this Docker image and deploy it on Dev, Prod, whatever it is. This means the point here to catch is the way of development, the way of deployment totally changed. Way of development means it's not that coding, the process of coding or coding change. They will code, they will develop, testers will test it as usual. Apart from this, they should know how to dockerize their application and share it in the DevOps methodology. Means everyone is involved in this methodology. Correct, Sarita? So the process, everyone is involved. There will be a lot of changes with respect to every team. Developers should know how they should share their application, how they should dockerize it. Means everyone should learn this. Uh, I mean to say, let's suppose, okay, you are a developer. You, you, are, you have passion for development. You still want to continue as a developer only. Perfect, fine. Then should you learn DevOps? Yes, because it is the methodology implemented. There were changes happening where you have to know how you containerize and dockerize your application DevOps methodology and share it to DevOps team. So definitely, even then, you don't want to become a DevOps engineer. As a developer or tester, you should know this. <clears throat> right? And let's say you are a developer. Now you want to switch the career. Okay, perfect, fine. Then you would be working on this process of automation. Means it's not always just only Docker image. There are so many things. Once code is ready, okay, once developers are ready with the code, okay, testers have done the testing, then this will hit the production servers automatically. Automatically in the sense, after all validations and testings, Okay, it will reach a production table. And what is happening here? What is happening in between here? What's happening here? This is the process of DevOps, right? This is where so many things happen, so many validations, so much of testing before it reaches a production table. So whoever knows this process of automation after developer writing the code and after testers ready with their test cases, what is the process of automation before it reaches the production? So whoever knows this part can become a DevOps engineer, irrespective of your earlier background and experience. If you are working in this process means you will not write the code, okay? Developers will write the code. QA people will write the test cases, automation test cases. Now, as a DevOps person, you should take this code, run the test case automatically. You will be uh, working on automating the execution of test case. You will not write the test case. You will not write the uh, code if you are a DevOps person. Developer will write the code. Testers will give you the test cases. You should take the code, build it through this automation process, execute the test cases through the process of automation, deploy on different servers, all right? I mean, different levels of testing. You deploy it on different environments like UAT, staging, property, prod, and so on, then to the production. So this process of automation, whoever learn it can become a DevOps engineer, irrespective of your previous experience or previous backgrounds. So as a DevOps person, should you learn coding? Do you do coding? Because this would be the question I see very uh, often. Do you write the code? Then what developers will do? There is still development team is there who write the code. There is still QA team is there who will uh, write the test cases, either automation or whatever it is, different levels of test cases, uh, different levels of testing we have. They have, they'll write those test cases and all. So you will be automating this. How do you automate this? How to automate a uh, test case execution? How to automate application build? How to deploy it? So many tools are involved. Like you have Jenkins, you have build automation tools, you have Docker, you have Kubernetes, Ansible, Terraform. Each has their own role. So that is all we will be learning here. We'll be sitting in this particular place. Am I clear now?
Is this much clear what a divorced person will do and where does he fit in? He works in this part. Yes, it is pretty clear. Yes. Right? Yes. So, if you are a divorced person, you should understand challenges of dev team, QA team doesn't mean that you go and write the code. You work in hand in hand because things happen parallelly. I'll talk about it in, in a while. So, you understood why DevOps came in, right? So, what is DevOps? DevOps is nothing but continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, along with a continuous deployment and continuous monitoring, which is missing in Agile. If you see Agile, you have these three, but continuous deployment is not there. Means the point is every change developer make, let's say this is some change developer make, it will go through the continuous testing, continuous integration, deploy, means that particular change will be deployed first to the lower environments, then to the higher environments before it reaches a production table, and then it would be continuously monitored. Means everything is happening parallelly, iteratively, continuously, whatever term you use. Continuous is the very appropriate term to use. Everything is happening parallel. Every change will go through the process. That's why deployments are very faster. They don't need to work on the instructions, Java versions and all, because developers are giving them Docker image, not they were just not handing over the application as it is. Right? So in, at every stage, there is a change, right? So because of this complete automation is possible, the gap is eliminated because they work together in communication, collaboration. Developers have to talk with DevOps teams when they were sharing this Docker image. They discuss the common areas of um, common areas of skill set was there now, Docker, right? Developers should also understand the pipelines. See, this, this is called CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines. Right. So this is what is DevOps. Now you understood why DevOps came in and what is DevOps, where do you fit in as a DevOps person? Right. Are we good? Yeah. Yes, pretty. And if you yeah. need to differentiate, okay, let's say waterfall methodology. In waterfall, there is a development. After that, you have testing. After that, you have means only once it is completed deployment and then monitoring, right? But in Agile, things happen parallelly, like continuous development and continuous testing and continuous integration, then deployment and monitoring after this. Then comes deployment and monitoring. I'm not writing completely. So then came DevOps. When you talk about DevOps, yes, continuous development and continuous testing and continuous integration along with continuous deployment and continuous monitoring. How is this possible? By use of automation, by use of the tools, DevOps tools, strategies. DevOps is not just any language or it's just not any tool. It's a methodology, it's a process. Okay, it has got certain strategies. You have to talk about the best practices, the strategies. Uh, by in, How is this possible? By implementing that. It's not just a tool stack, right? It's a, It has a process, the methodology, the strategies. By use of the tools, 24-7 automation is possible. Also, in waterfall methodology, because each thing is happening uh, one after the other, developers, QA team, ops team has no proper collaboration. They work as separate team, no proper collaboration, no communication. They don't understand why they were doing it. And in Agile, because of continuous development and continuous testing, these two teams were brought together. They were like working as a single team by uh, communication, by collaboration, by understanding challenges. But ops team was still left in isolation. Then with the DevOps, even these two are brought together. These two means Dev, I have already included QA. So that is what is DevOps. Continuous communication with developers and testers is important. It doesn't mean that you should tell them how to write the code or you should write the code. The process, where is their dockerization, how they were dockerizing it. If they face any issues, reverting back to them, saying that there is dockerization issue in Docker file. So that kind of common areas, common skill set was there, which everyone should communicate and work on. That is what is DevOps. 
So whoever coming from any other area, you might be a DB person, you might be a DBA, or you might be working in middleware, you might be working on monitoring, you might be working as a QA person, you might be working as a developer, whoever you are, or else you might be a business analyst, completely different. So whoever you are, if you know this process of automation by knowing the DevOps strategies on the tools, you can become a DevOps person. You don't need to have coding or whatever it is. Are we good? Yes, please. So yeah. now we understood what is DevOps and why DevOps came in. Now we have to learn how to implement it. Right? How to implement it, we will do hands-on from tomorrow. But before we go there, we have certain things to look in. Let me go through, uh, walk you through those things. Hmm. So DevOps overview, that's what these are all the things whichever we have discussed. I have documented this. This presentation will be shared with you for reference, like a notes, you can go through it. Right? Why DevOps came in? These are the three things we were talking about. What is DevOps? We have understood. The differences also, like see, are design, coding, testing, deploy. Then in Azal, you have continuous coding, like uh, sorry, continuous development, continuous testing, but deployment is all at the end. But here in Aza, uh, in Waterfall, uh, sorry, in DevOps, you have continuous deployment as well. See, have you ever wondered if you see any application like Amazon.com or Facebook, you see some features overnight, right? How is that possible? through DevOps. There might be some pandemic or something uh, uh, like which uh, they have to implement overnight. That's happening, right? Through this, because of this DevOps methodology. Almost all the gigantic companies are implementing this methodology. Nowadays, all small cases companies are also coming up because that's what companies need, right? Faster deployments, quality products, and initially to design it, more people may be required. But once the pipeline is designed, you just need one or two people hardly to monitor it, right? No manual intervention. Everything will be automated. So, yes, obviously it cuts on the manual uh, manual resources, the human resources. Means you can understand in couple of years, every company will implement it. And the strongest person with the skill set will survive in the market because it's going to be automated. Only the person with the strongest skill set will survive. Everyone should step in, even though they were developers or testers or DBA, everyone should know this methodology, right? And this is the right time for you to invest your time and effort and go through these things, right? Yes, Prasanna, everyone, you might be a manager, you might be a team member, you might be a new person. If you're a manager, definitely you need to have a complete idea on the things, right? As a manager, even I, I wouldn't, uh, may not be stepping to the things, a small minor things, but I should monitor, I should be able to give them uh, the suggestions and the best practices to be implemented. I should guide the people, right? That's where we gain strength in the team. So definitely everyone should know it. Thank you. So roles and responsibilities of a DevOps person, like we understood, right? Or we should know the tools, the strategies and the methodology here. So these are all the tools we'll be going in. This is just a brief list of the course. We'll be learning a version control system. You might be using some version control system, but here we will be learning this from the basics till advanced so that you can clear any interview question on Git and you can work in your project very confidently. That's the main agenda of the course. You should clear your interviews. You should be able to switch your careers and work on the projects more confidently right that's what you will see you will gain from this course and now coming to the version control system git there were so many version control systems you might be heard about svn tfs and so on you don't need to learn all the, the tools you should learn the tools which are the market leaders which are having very great demand in the market which are very widely used so that you have more chances into the projects. Of course, if you learn no any other tool, learning uh, the tool in the category is very simple. Means let's say you know Git, you can switch into any other tool very easily under this category. So always learn and master one tool in the category. So I have used the uh, ones which are very widely used like Git, Amon, Jenkins, Docker, Ansible, Terraform, both of them will be covered. Kubernetes, Docker Swarm will be covered. Prometheus will be covered as well as Grafana. 
and a certain AWS services for DevOps will also be covered. Here, the main agenda is DevOps. Here, we'll be learning DevOps so that you can implement it irrespective of the platform. It's a methodology, okay? It's not stick to any uh, platform or any environment. So DevOps is a methodology which you can implement on on cloud or else on-prem. You can implement anywhere. So after this course, you'll be able to implement DevOps on any platform, okay? Like I'll be showing you how do you implement it on-prem or how do you implement on cloud as well. As an example of one cloud, we were doing with AWS. If you know implementing DevOps on one cloud, it is again similar to implement it on any cloud. That is the agenda. Even companies are looking for, if you have idea on one cloud, that's enough. They're not looking for, you should know Azure, you should know Go, GCP, you should know Linear, no. There were hundreds of clouds. They were emerging every day, right? You never know what technologies comes up. So people should be flexible enough and implement it to other parallel technologies. It's not possible for everyone to learn all version control systems or all uh, continuous integration tools. No, that shouldn't be the case. Companies are looking for people. If you know these tools, they can switch on to other very easily in that category. Am I making sense? Following everyone? That is how. One doubt with the, so most, of the, most of the organizations are using AWS and Azure. What about the Google Cloud? The, if the requirement is there, so both are, the, all the clouds are same. Is there any difference? That's what I'm saying. Which cloud they were using depends on so many factors. There were so many clouds used. Maybe AWS might be more, Azure might be more. But yeah, there were so many other clouds where companies are using it as per their requirements. But like I mentioned, if you know working on AWS, Companies are not saying, they won't say no because we are using GCP. No, that's not the case. They were welcoming people with the idea that if you are working on AWS means you can work on GCP or other clouds. That's the expectation. And that's the flexibility they were looking into the candidates because you never know tomorrow what a new cloud is emerging. When we sit in the interview panel, we look at the people and their approach and the attitude and their flexibility to pick up on the parallel technologies. Right? Like if you know AWS, I definitely expect that, okay, you can just uh, get into Azure very easily with a little exploration and little effort. That's my expectation. That's what companies would expect from people. Uh, Pretty one question here. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, while going through this uh, course, you said that continuous development, continuous testing, continuous uh, deployment, right? So I cannot see any continuous testing, uh, you know, tool here because I can see continuous development and continuous uh, integration and everything, continuous monitoring. But uh, are we missing any continuous testing uh, tool? In are this, we, uh, yeah, I'm answering your question. So are we also seeing any continuous development tool here? Do you see any development tool here? Build automation is the continuous development, right? Uh, no, that's build, build. continuous builds. Yeah. Sorry, build automation, that's continuous builds. That's not development tool. Okay, mm -hmm. let I me mean, tell you. Mm. See, developers will write the code. Testers will write the test cases. Your job is executing the test case in the pipeline. That's all. You will not be working with any test automation tool as a DevOps person. You will not be writing the test case or you will not be working with any test automation tool. You will be executing them in the pipeline. That's all. Executing test case in the pipeline is what you do. That's it. For that, you don't need to learn any test automation tool or you don't need to learn development here. Got it? So you will not see any continuous development tools or you will not see any continuous test tools here. But in the build of this pipeline, yes, we will be running those test cases in the pipeline. Those test cases may be written in any using any automation tool like JMeter, Selenium, UFT, so on. Irrespective of which tool they have used for testing, you will learn how to execute them in the pipeline. How do you automate their execution in the pipeline? That's what we do as a DevOps person. Hope this answers your question. Yes, Priti. Thank you. Right. So, Priti, do you need any coding language? So, you know, like uh, Ansible, Terraform, Docker, all this, we need some uh, coding, right? Like uh, AML language. See, we will yeah. not do any coding like developers do. Okay. Developers, that development is different. That coding is different. Here, Ansible, Kubernetes, they need some config files which are written in YAML. Okay, YAML is not something you should go and learn it separately. 
right? It's a language which is human readable, which everyone can understand. And even Kubernetes manifest files, they have format. They have templates already. You use them and modify it. That's all. You don't need any pre or coding skills for this. We don't develop like developers. Do. Those are config files or manifest files. That's not development. So these are the... So easy to uh, run and write on. Over, right? Huh? So it is, uh, you, you may say like it is easy to, easy to understand and we can write yes. on. Like I said, you don't need to learn it separately as a language. Right. And that's not called as development first. That's a configuration file. Ansible config file, Terraform config files, Kubernetes manifest files. That's not called as development and you don't need any coding skills prior to this. Okay. Yes, please. One after hour. So I'm asking like any uh, required for Python. Python is not mandatory in DevOps. Okay, Python uh, may be used to automate certain things, but it's not mandatory for DevOps. It's a good to have skill. That's it. Which not mandatory. Uh, what about the Unix and the Linux? Yeah, I'm coming to that part. So these are the tools we'll be going through and a majority of the tools here needs Linux environment. Okay, so Linux is required. And we will be learning this Linux from the basics. So if you are completely new to Linux, you need not worry. We will learn the basics, whichever required for us to get started with. Those things will be covered. Yeah, hi, Preeti. I have one more question. Yes. Uh, I'm a developer. Whenever I enter, uh, enter for an interview, they're asking, do you have experience in Azure or AWS? So from the developer side, what exactly they're looking for? They use uh, some, uh, maybe if it is a DevOps project, they might be expecting certain AWS services which are implemented for DevOps. Uh, it is for DevOps role or uh, what is the role for? It's a, de it's a .NET developer role. I was applying what and they're the asking role? that Sorry? .NET developer. .NET developer, okay. So they were asking the AWS yeah. services which are used for development as well, right? Like a, a code, uh, code build is there. Right, code commit services there, Lambda services is, are there, which developers do use. That's a different story. We don't have that relation with the DevOps. Okay, that's not going to be explained here. Mm -hmm. That's a developer uh, services, right? Few of them will be covered from the perspective of DevOps. Okay, okay. from the perspective of developer, it would be different. You should go for a separate course if you are looking for developer role. Okay, for okay. I'm teaching you here, certain services which are uh, from the perspective of DevOps. Those services my developers also might be using, but their perspective might be different. I'm not into it, isn't it? Okay, okay, thank you. So yeah, this is a brief list of the topics. Like I said, we'll be learning Linux and YAML files will be writing. You don't need development or anything for work with those manifest files. I see so many people struggling or having a notion that, okay, Kubernetes means coding. Never. Kubernetes is not coding. I'm a certified Kubernetes developer. I'm a certified Terraform professional. We don't do that kind of do development like developers do. Okay, Kubernetes, you have official documentation where you have the manifest files. Those files are called manifest files, right? All the manifest files format is there. You modify them with appropriate to your requirement. That doesn't need coding. So if anyone have that wrong notion, just get rid of it. Okay, you have, and by the way, Kubernetes, Terraform, these are open book exams. Be it in a certification test or be it in a real projects or be it in an interview, you always refer that official documentation and get those manifest files and modify them and use it. So that's no way related to coding. If something is holding you because of this uh, kind of uh, misconceptions or misguidance, just come out of it. You don't struggle like or else it's not the way like you, developers write the code. There's a lot of difference. This is no way called as development. Okay. So, and also there were so many ways now which is making these things much better. There were so many ways you automate this manifest files also. So you just concentrate on the DevOps strategies, DevOps tools. If anyone have that wrong notion, you can just come out of it. All right. So yeah, these are the tools. And yes, this is the CI/CD pipeline I'm talking about from the beginning. Of course, this is again an overview. If you see here, see all the tools are linked. Do you see? 
Git, Maven, Jenkins. See, Selenium testing, do you see any test cases, execution will be done in the pipeline. That part we will be learning. It's not that you are learning Selenium here. You are learning writing Selenium test cases. No. Test cases are already there. Testers are there. They will provide you. You execute them automatically in the pipeline. Then comes Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Terraform, Prometheus. You can see the complete part. This CICD pipeline can be implemented on on-prem or else on, on cloud also. Any cloud you can implement. So here this is the whole picture and this CICD pipeline will be implemented on multiple projects in this course. Right, One is a monolithic one and another one is microservice. It takes some days, months to do this. Right, So throughout our course from day one, we'll be starting working on it. And when we start the course, we'll be first learning each section here. Means you dissect the pipeline and learn it. Means first we'll be working on Git. From the basics still advanced, learn it thoroughly. Then learn Jenkins. Then integrate and create pipeline till this part. Then you are good with this, then go for Maven, add it to the pipeline. Then see how test case execution, add it to the pipeline. That's how we build up this pipeline day by day by day. You We zoom into each section and master each tool and then add it to the pipeline and build it. So which takes a couple of months. So as we go by, things fall in the place and you can connect the dots. So Priti, all these are open source or means how uh, do we uh, go for hands-on? Do these we have any open there? source tools? Okay, we'll be setting up our lab on AWS by taking a free account. How to create a free account on AWS, we will show you. You will have your own lab so that you can do your hands-on at your own pace at your convenience. Okay, that's a free lab. And uh, these are all open source tools which you can install and do the hands-on. We will be implementing on AWS doesn't mean that it's a stick to AWS. We will be implementing on AWS without using like without using any AWS DevOps services, assuming that like, like they are on on-prem. Just we'll use some VMs from AWS and implement DevOps like you implement it on on-prem. Later on, I'll also show you how to use AWS services uh, so that how do you implement it on cloud. That also will be covered. Means we'll be covering it in two perspectives. Okay, and pretty last question. Uh, you know, I have heard a few tools like you deploy and RT Factory, where they are fitting here. I understand that they might be different, and you are using something else. But where they are fitting here in this track? You deploy is similar to Jenkins, like what Jenkins does. You deploy is similar to that, and RT Factory is nothing but like you when you build your application, you have a var file generated, right? That can be stored in the RT Factory. In the traditional approach or else in our approach, we are containerizing it or dockerizing it, docker image. Even docker images can be stored in artifactory. That's where they come in. Artifactories could be to store your artifacts. Those artifacts might be your, uh, your var files, jar files or else your docker images. There were so many artifacts, artifactories like uh, JFrog, Nexus. Even for Docker images, there is a separate uh, dedicated artifactories like Docker Hub, ECR means Elastic Container Registry, GCR, Google Container Registry. These will be covered. Docker Hub, ECR will be covered. Thank you, Prithi. Any more questions from anyone else? So uh, this is the presentation and the overview. All this presentation, okay, whatever we were dealing with and everyday hands-on, uh, everyday hands-on will be there from tomorrow itself, hands-on begins. You have all the hands-on documentations here, how to do the lab setup, get and whatever, everything. Today's presentation is also here. Sample, resumes, interview questions. Apart from this, you will have access to our LMS. If you go to our website, how many of you have visited my website by now? Okay, some of you have gone through and some of you may not. It's okay. So this is this is where you have the syllabus, okay? And you have the self-learning. This is a different part, self-learning. And the, when you go to the live training, this is the login you will get where you have sample resumes, assignments, quiz. Quiz is very important. Every day you should go through the quiz from your end. Lab material, interview questions, you will get access to all of this. If you go for interview questions, there are topic-wise interview questions. Let's say go to Git. 
Again, there are levels, beginner level, intermediate level, advanced, scenario-based questions. You can go through all of that and prepare yourself to reach your goal. We are here with all the content, all the material which will help you to reach out your goal. And we need your time, your dedication and effort. These are the three things I need from you. So if you have all these things, you are in the right hands. And, and we will have like, unlimited access uh, for this tool or for this application. Means uh, yes. any limitation. Recording sessions, drive access, LMS access for lifetime. Okay. Thank you. And here today also, I'm just giving you a small quiz for today. This will definitely have some questions outside the discussion. That's for you to see how you can uh, uh, think and answer. Okay. I have launched the quiz. Have you all got it? What is Here in the polls, you should click on the polls on the Zoom. Can you all access it? Just one question, right? No, no, you will have uh, other questions. You no, should... no, we have, I think, multiple questions. Yeah. You have to scroll through. Go through it and meanwhile, any questions you can ask me. Every day you will have quizzes as such in the portal. You can also retake them from the portal, from the elements. You have all of those things available. Siti, can you launch again? I click on submit after two questions. Yeah, please launch again for me as well. Just a second. Please don't uh, submit it, okay? Before you checking, I'm starting it again. Just a second. Hope you all got it now. Don't submit. Please check before you submit. Any more queries from anyone? This is a very simple basic quiz on today. So every day you will have similar things on the technical questions so that this will help you to reiterate, recollect the things learned. Hi, Preeti. Can yeah. you launch again? Uh, actually, I have not received that message. Previously, I was received. But, Launching uh, again will not work. You have to click on the polls. On the more, you will see uh, three dots. More When you click that, you will see polls. You have to click, uh, click that to see the poll. So what is the course duration? Course duration is two months. Every day we'll have a session from 7.30 to 9. Like last 15 minutes will be questionnaire. Monday to Friday. And how long we can offer this amplifying videos and lab machine? For lifetime, you will have access to the videos, the um, chat, all this material, even WhatsApp groups. There is a separate WhatsApp group. Please, everyone join that WhatsApp group to get the updates regarding the recordings, everything. Please join the WhatsApp group, everyone. Do we have any dedicated team uh, to resolve any uh, issues during the last sessions? Sorry, louder, please. 
do we have any team uh, to resolve any of uh, issues which we get in yeah. the lab? We have a WhatsApp group, okay, where uh, everyone will be added. Anyone can respond to them as well as we have team who will respond for your queries. Even I will respond whenever I'm available. Yeah, uh, Preeti, one thing. So regarding AWS, right? So we will be covering all the like AWS DevOps tools here. Whatever relevant to DevOps that will be covered. You can go through the course content. Okay, what are all covered is there on the website. Okay, okay. Whichever relevant to DevOps, those things will be covered. Hello. Hi, Priti. Yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, actually, I have eight years of non IT. Non -IT. Uh, I can learn uh, these are tools and I can uh, get. Uh, Jobs in there like that. Uh, you you want to join as a fresher or how you would uh, like to join so it you should also work on that part okay coming to the course yes you can learn it like because like i said we'll be going from the basics everyone can learn it so how do you present yourself for the interviews how do you market yourself that's a point you can uh, discuss those things with raj he's a counselor who can help you on those things much better okay you can call on this number on the website. Uh, he can help you with that part. Pretty, I have submitted the quiz. Uh... Yeah. So, yeah, once uh, everyone submit, almost 63% participation. I'm expecting all the 100% participation. Yeah, 71% participation now. Please, everyone, whoever, uh, the remaining 30%, try to uh, launch your quiz. When you click the three dots, you will see polls. You should click on that so that you will see the quiz. So as per the course content, we will go uh, in the sequence, right? Like suppose one, two, three, uh, you mentioned like introduction to DevOps, operating system, and in that sequence, we uh, continue the course, right? Uh, I don't know where you're checking the sequence. I'll be going in a sequence which suits for us. Like, yeah, first we'll be starting with Git, then Linux Basics, then Jenkins. Maven and then comes Docker, Kubernetes, and then Terraform, Ansible, monitoring tools, and AWS services and Linux will be learned from the beginning throughout the because it's not that I keep hiding okay, today we'll learn all AWS services in one go. No. As per the requirement, let's say I'm building a pipeline. Here I need some AWS service. Then we will learn it. Tomorrow I'm doing some Kubernetes. There I need another AWS service. I might be doing that. So that's how we will learn AWS and Linux throughout. Okay. Yeah, I can see in the website uh, where it is in the syllabus. So I can see from 1 to 18. Uh, this task. Yeah. Yes. Certain AWS services which are like uh, uh, which are used for pipeline, those will be covered towards the other services parallelly we will be learning as the requirement. Day-to-day -day activities are you will be working on those CICD pipelines, Kaushik. Not only that, you will be working on setting up the intra with Terraform, setting up the Kubernetes clusters, modifying the Kubernetes manifest files. These are all the areas of work you have. You will be having a daily, like you will be having sprint as well, like uh, having all these tasks. Every day scrum call will be there as usual, like you have in the traditional approaches. So according to the priority, the task will be assigned and uh, yeah, those tasks will be completed. Various mm -hmm. designations. Designations depends on organizations, right? There might not be DevOps at all in the designation, but still they work in the DevOps projects. So you don't just depend on the designation, rely on designation. Whenever you are applying for a role, you read the job description to understand what they were expecting. Eighty-seven percent participated. Good, and or remaining thirteen percent also. Whoever haven't started it, if you can launch your quiz, that would be good. And if you are all done, I'll close the quiz and we'll share the results. Yeah, pretty. Uh, one question that from coming month means fourth February, the batch will start from six o'clock to seven thirty. Yes, that's another from... match. Okay, that is another batch. Means Correct. this course duration is one month or? Two months. 
two months. This is seven thirty okay. batch, which will which started in March. It will go till March completely and April completely, till May okay. first week. It will go on. Okay. That is different batch at six o'clock. Uh, if I just have one doubt. So you said the uh, setting up the DevOps tools in the on premises, right? But you will be creating a EC2 instances but, and installing all the DevOps tools from scratch rather than uh, creating a virtual box from the local system. Correct. Right? That is what you mean, right? Correct, 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 Srinivas. It's not AWS DevOps, but that will be covered later on with respect to the AWS DevOps. Correct, correct. Oh, so, uh, Preeti, I have one question. Um, will you cover the uh, uh, how to deploy application uh, on a EKS? Of course, yes. I'll be, oh, it, it will be covered okay. on prem approach as well as EKS will be covered. EKS is a managed service. Okay, it's a paid service, but even I'm covering it because that's have huge demand. And as a Kubernetes professional, I do work on EKS a lot. So yes, definitely you will get exposure and uh, good understanding on those as well. Do we need to uh, learn how to deploy application on a Beanstack? It will be Beanstack, uh, it, it's not which is not that much used. It's not mandatory. Like I said, right, it's not a cloud specific. Even though it's you are implementing on clouds, Elastic Beanstalk is not mandatory. It's for limited uh, usage for testing and dev environments, you use Elastic Beanstack. Even I'm covering that. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's not much. Okay, we are covering. Um, okay, that's awesome. So uh, after we're done with the uh, session, uh, after how long uh, the recording will be available? Recording will be available after a couple of hours, generally after one or two hours. Maybe if any technical glitches are there, it may take some, but generally after one to two hours, recording will be available. After. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes uh, your timing uh, uh, doesn't match with my availability. So I might have to uh, watch the recording and do the practice before next session. Yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we have passive learners. I have learners from other regions, other time zones as well, who watch the uh, regular class recording as they can't make up to the class for various reasons. Even people working in shifts, they might not be available. So... Yes, recording will be posted after one to two hours. As much as early as possible, we'll do that to accommodate everyone. Unless until there were some glitches once or twice, it will be on after one to two hours. It will be available. Because so to access, access a question on your website, uh, do we need to sign up first for the website? Yes, you have to sign up after uh -huh. registration. Once you are registered, you will be given those... Uh, um, log in and you can able to sign up and access everything. And please, see whatever please. WhatsApp group you are in there, all the um, you can post your queries. You can post. You can use it for all the updates for a couple of days. Yeah. After uh, two days, you'll you all be moved to separate WhatsApp group for registered students. Whoever registered will be moved to separate a dedicated WhatsApp group, a private group, where it would be. Uh, you will be sharing your queries with the screenshots on the hands-on and all. A dedicated support will be provided. Whoever so right now, I'm part, I'm part of a one uh, WhatsApp group, which is a DevOps new batch. Is there any WhatsApp, uh, any other WhatsApp group? Yes, another WhatsApp group will be there, a private group for registered students. Once registered, you will be moved to that. Okay, once registered. Yes. Okay, thank you. So what is the registration process? How to pay payment the... of the fee, you can check with Raj on those details. This is the number. This is his WhatsApp number or you can directly call. He can share you the details of registration with the fee payment details. Okay. And one more question. Mm -hmm. We are we are talking of many tools here in with the span of two months with the one, point, uh, one and a half hour. Are you sure? I mean, are we sure like uh, we are going to cover all the uh, content of the course? Yeah. See, each tool I can also teach for six months or one year. Okay, that is also I can do. But here, mm -hmm. that doesn't work, right? 12 tools, you will learn 12 years, right? So you should mm -hmm. be learning, you should be knowing what to learn in these tools, what you can leave off. Because if you see a documentation for Kubernetes, I can teach that for one year, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. work for you. So whatever is needed for you to get into the projects, to clear your interviews, what are the 
uh, features of this tool or what are the topics you use in the project. You don't use all of them in the documentation or in the tools, right? So mm -hmm. the course is well designed in such a way that what you should learn for Kubernetes. To work on Kubernetes, what you should learn. To work on Ansible, what you should learn. What, to what extent you should learn till the advanced part, how to implement it in the real CICD, what are all the things you should know about Ansible. That's how the course is designed. It's a well-structured and designed course with my all my experience into IT and particularly my expertise in DevOps. This is designed. I have designed this with the keeping in mind the needs of the real-time projects. So you can dedicate this time to learn in a structured way which can be helpful okay oh, thank you uh, pretty, uh, uh one more question uh will you be helping us uh, with the uh interview preparation and uh, uh, resume writing yes of course like firstly in the class it, in, it will be covered from the perspective of interviews and you have a lot of interview questions like I have already shown you for each tool. You have different interview questions. These are all not just dumps and just copy and paste thing. Majority of them, I have designed them as like uh, from my experience in the interview panels. As I sit in the interview panel, like what questions we ask or how do we, or like what are the expectations of the interview? That's how they were designed. So if you go through them, that will be helping you a lot to clear your interviews. Okay, thank you. Hi, Prithi. One question. Uh, uh, do you teach any like real time projects, uh, like any architectures at the end of the course uh, with this complete end to end tools? Because we have, like, uh, if you see, we have like VM based deployments, hybrid deployments. Uh, then again, we have a code pipelines. So, this all these variations uh, will be covered as part of a project because to get uh, understanding how in the real time uh, people use these projects for their complete build and release pipelines. Yes, all those will be covered, Sagar. Okay, real applications in the sense, real scenarios will be covered. Okay, real applications you will never get. Real application, application may be different, but the scenarios will be covered. All those scenarios will be covered. Different approaches of handling your application, all of them will be covered. And here I'm taking a monolithic application and microservice application as well, so that you will see different approaches of deploying them. All those real scenarios will be covered. Okay, do we have okay, any the other thing is you talk about uh, one second please let me answer the question completely and you're talking about application architecture as a DevOps person you will never work on application architecture you'll be working on designing the CICD pipeline that part we will do we will be working on designing the CICD pipeline like how you would buy uh, design your pipeline for this application how you design it for uh, uh, microservice one like or how to implement a code pipeline service here that part which DevOps persons are focusing will be covered. Application architect architecture, we are not relevant or DevOps will not work on application architectures. So pretty uh, for the uh, uh, labs, will we use uh, more the uh, Java-based application or the Python or um, what kind of application we'll choose most of the time? Like I said, we'll be using one monolithic and one microservice application. Monolithic okay. is a Java-based one. The microservice is PHP SQL one. PHP MySQL DB uh, one we'll be using for microservice part. But uh, we'll not touch a Node.js or any uh, application? The irrespective of your technologies, irrespective of the platform, DevOps is implemented. Means it's okay. not that you should do deploy. It's a deploying your application, right? Whether you deploy PHP right. or uh, Python application or Java application, things doesn't change. Wherever there is a change, what makes the difference, where you have to have differences, that part we will learn. But it doesn't change the strategies or the process or the way you deploy. Here and there, right. there might be a change when you are building it. That building the application is taken care by developers. But even then, I'll talk about those differences. But that doesn't uh, make any difference uh, with your uh, core uh, concepts. So pretty irrespective of whether I know Java or not, but uh, we are good fit here, right? Because uh, you know there are a lot of uh, associates who are not uh, uh, 
you know coming with uh, any technical background like java or python or something like that so it's still oh, because yes. it is deployment so it is not uh, yes. sticking to particular you know language right obviously see if you if when we are deploying if you uh, say that yeah for deploying you need to learn java then to deploy python you should learn python if you to deploy some other application dot net you should learn dot net that doesn't work okay you don't need to learn those languages to deploy those applications obviously yes correct any more questions from anyone Hi, Preeti. Srinath here. Mm -hmm. I have eight years of experience in QA. So once I complete this course, uh, suppose if I started uh, working on DevOps and uh, I real and if I get any stuck there, I am unable to proceed my task. So after completing my course, can I get any help from your side? Yes, we'll, you will get the support from our side. You have WhatsApp group there, like I said. So any questions you have, you can post it there. We'll be helping you with I am not talking about dedicated job support. Okay, job support is different thing. I am talking about any questions you have, any help you have that we'll do. Uh, like uh, when you are doing your hands on, how we help the same way we will be helping with you. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Uh, one last question, please. So in in so let's take in negative part. I joined the post, but I I, I just. Uh, continued for 15 days, but due to some personal reasons, I could not able to continue. Is there any possibility that I can join in the next batch with similar? Uh, yeah, if you or... can't make it after a few days, you can retake the uh, batch, retake other batches. Uh, in one year, you can retake the batches. You can retake the training in any other batches. Yes, okay. So within one year, we can. We don't have to pay again, but we can join. Even though you complete one batch, if you want to retake to revise your things, you can also retake. That is also fine. See, the okay. whole idea is the whole idea is uh, I want to see you people reaching out to your goals, right? That's the whole idea. So we are flexible enough to help you with that. Being said that, yeah, with all the um, pointers or with all the conditions, yes, we always there to help you achieve your goals. Thank you. And uh, pretty one more thing. After completing this course, are we getting any kind of certification or any kind of you know uh, uh, you know course completion certificates? See, I'm after not completing... providing any certifications. Firstly, we are not any institute. Uh, like you might be knowing, I'm a working professional. Out of my passion, I'm conducting these trainings. So no certifications will be provided from my end. And another thing, you have to make a notice. Certifications provided by any other institute will also not be valid. Okay, that will not be valid. Okay, DevOps doesn't have any particular specific certification. You have to certification on each individual tool and those certifications should be provided. Please keep muted everyone to avoid backgrounds. So certifications provided by any private institutes will not be valid. DevOps doesn't have a specific certification except some AWS, but that's not uh, that much helpful to do DevOps certification. You have to do certification on the tools separately. And those certifications should be provided the particular vendors. Okay. Like if you do go for Kubernetes certification, CNCF, Kubernetes, CNCF foundation should provide you the certification, not anyone else. Only those are valid. Okay. So rather than certifications, you should concentrate on showing your expertise in the resume. Okay, show your strength by keeping the topics or be, uh, by uh, giving the tools in your resume and expertise those tools. That's That will be beneficial for you. Certifications are secondary. Yeah, Preeti, I have a question. Um, so if in any case, if this batch work timings will not work, so may I ask like when the morning batch again starts at 6? La, come again, please, uh, Sarita. Sorry, I missed you in the beginning. Yeah, I'm asking like if this uh, this batch timings are actually not uh, feasible for me. So can I ask like uh, when the next morning, like 6 o'clock batch will start? You can switch over. Yes, you can uh, take this batch and if you feel like after one month, if these timings are not suiting, you can switch over. That's perfectly possible. Okay, fine.
you can switch over you can retake within one year okay that is to make sure you are like completing your course and getting a because see within one year if you uh, like cannot make it it's like you can't make it ever because the one year is huge time span you should switch on right the agenda of designing the course by choosing the topics by planning the content in such a way that the main agenda is you should switch on to your job very quickly that's the main agenda right it's not that after one year or after two years this course is helpful no the idea is immediate help is required right now the market is good let's suppose you want to jump in now not after six or eight months so the main thing is keep in mind that you should be jumping reaching your goal as soon as possible that should be your uh, dedication means that's how you should plan and we are here to help you with all right then i think that's Riti, my end. i have one question sure please Riti, i have around you know uh, i in uh, 10 to 12, 13 years of experience and i'm into infrastructure side not a development side uh, kind of managerial role. So how would this course help me in future? Because if I go to DevOps, uh, you know, if I switch to DevOps, um, I cannot even start from this, you know, uh, starting level in the DevOps. So how would I get help from this? This course, like I said, will be starting from basic still advanced level. Okay, this is not just a fresher or beginner level. You will see end-to-end -end pipelines and you can claim more than four years experience also with this course five to six years experience also people have claimed claimed how many years of experience you claim depends on how much expertise you gained means you have to do thorough hands-on you have to dig in more we'll be giving you some hands-on you should extend those scenarios and do the hands-on that's how you gain your expertise so as a managerial role if you have that uh, three to four years of experience to divorce will be helping you a lot to guide your people right so when you switch on to DevOps, yeah, this much expertise you will get after this course. So you may be switching into DevOps managerial role or else uh, the same team if you are uh, jumping or switching it into DevOps methodology, this will help you to guide the people, right? In that way, definitely this course will help you. Okay. All right, then. Thank you all for joining. This recording will be posted in the YouTube after some couple of years and the links and the updates will be shared in, shared in the WhatsApp group. Whoever not yet in the WhatsApp group, please join the group. And later on, once registered, you will be moved to separate WhatsApp group. Until then, please join this group. Okay, and any questions, you can reach out to me on the WhatsApp or you can reach out to Raj. The number is available on the website. And see you all tomorrow at the same time. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Priti. Thank you. Thank you.